This is just going to be a video on how to understand what the stationing information is on the PLC 400 when you are stationing your unit. I just want to clear up some things and make sure that uh, you have all the information you need to be successful and accurate in the field. So I just have a very basic three control point file over here just to kind of get started to keep this simple. And a lot of times you come to the situation, you measure three control points, which I have here, all of them green, all of them measured. Now down here, what's going on down here is you have basically a tip of the iceberg view of what's going on with your stationing. This first page is your basic information about how the tool is stationed, and then the next page is where you get into more of the details of how it found the stationing information. So let me start with this page. So over here on the right side, you have your stationing information. And zeros, generally speaking, yes, they look good but there's a lot more you need to understand about how it found that zero. For now, just know at the tip of the iceberg, zero means that it was able to take each one of those three control points and it was able to find a way to best fit them to be the exact dimensions and angles of the plan to get this zero, zero margin of error. There's a lot more to this though, and we need to see the next page to get into it more, and I'm gonna explain it. So zeros, yes, look good, but please wait to see the next page to make sure you know if you want to accept it or not. Over here on the project point information, you see how many numbers of points you've measured, and then you see this delta horizontal distance and the delta height. So what that means is uh, obviously every single control point, there's distances between these, one to two, two to three, and uh, if you have control points with heights on them, there's obviously a height value in there as well. And essentially what this is doing is it's taking the total horizontal distance between all the points and comparing that to what the total station actually measured. So it knows what the, the total horizontal distance is supposed to be. It takes into account what it actually measured and it comes up with some sort of delta DV, like a, a delta number of how, it, how much it might be off from what the actual should be. That's what these numbers are saying. It does it for the horizontal distance and the height. Now again, this is still tip of the iceberg information. It's just basically telling you the whether or not something might be off or not um, and how much that might be off. So it's good information to know, but again, we need to go onto the next page to really see what's going on with your stationing. So I'm gonna press check to go to the next page. And on this next page, you see some information that helps you understand more about how the station was able to find this location. So let's review this. The station information, these coordinates, are basically telling you where the station thinks it is right on the job site. If you have a job site with a CAD plan, every single station is going to be a specific coordinate on that plan. The line work is going to be at a specific coordinate on that plan. The points are going to be a specific coordinate on that plan. So this is the station saying that given the points you gave it over here, this is the location that I am on your job site. Now, the margin of error over here, all this means is saying that the total station was able to manipulate the control points that you measured in such a way that it was able to find a perfect fit, meaning that the control points have now been adjusted by the total station in such a way to where they essentially match exactly the distances and angles that the plan was designed to have them. Now you, now you know that you have a coordinate with the zero margin of error, but that zero margin of error only came because the total station had to do some adjustments to the control points on the left. That's what's going on on this screen. And in a moment, I'm going to purposely manipulate one of the control points, specifically control point one, and you'll see how the station could still, still, could still find a zero margin of error. It could still find a best fit but you'll see why you need to consider all the adjustments it's making to all the control points to find that best fit to determine whether or not you also think it's accurate enough to continue. So let's stand by and look at an example real quick. So let me go back here and let me remeasure point one for a second. So point one, what I'm gonna do is I have my prism on point one and I'm gonna purposely move it off that point and make a mismeasurement by about an inch. So I moved it off the point by about an inch and I'm gonna remeasure it. Okay, 
Now, before I even go on, notice, the station information still says plus or minus margin of error of a zero. You see why I don't always assume that just because I have plus or minus zero that I'm a good stationing, right? Because I know, like even before I go forward, I know I purposely moved 0.3 off that point. I know I'm off on one of my control points. And so what, the, what I know from the outset, if this says plus or minus zero, yeah, what that's telling me is just, okay, this station was able to find the best fit among the three points I gave it or however many points you gave it. But I need good to go to the next page to really see how it found that best fit to determine whether or not I want to even accept that stationing. So zeros look good, but you need to get more information. Then I look over here. <clears throat> I move, Remember, I moved it off the point about an inch, and now my delta horizontal distance changed to about a quarter of an inch, which um, makes me wonder, okay, well, obviously I'm off somewhere, and I need to go over here to see why. Okay, so I'm going to press check. And so I have these new stationing coordinates, um, and I still have the zero margin of error. And let's go ahead and go over here and see how the station had to adjust my control points that I measured to get this best fit. So remember, the only point that I adjusted was point one. This is the only point that I cared to change. Okay, these two points are made, I didn't even remeasure. So what this is doing is saying, okay, if I'm gonna, if the station is gonna take into account all three of these control points, then this is how it has to move the actual measurements that I made of it to find this best fit to find it at this coordinate to where it's it's able to perfectly fit these control points to the way that the control points are supposed to be designed to a zero margin of error. Okay, that's what it's doing. But obviously this zero margin of error, I just keep, I wanna keep reiterating this, this zero margin of error does not mean that the station is necessarily accurate. All it means is that if it was to use these three points and it wants to best fit these three points to be exactly the way that they're dimensionalized on the plan, this is how the points had to move. Okay, but remember, I only manipulated point one. So one thing I can do on here is let's say that I'm curious which points might be on, might be off, or whatever. I can start to click, turn some of these on or off. So I know that I messed up on point one. So I'm going to tell the total station to not even consider this point in calculating these coordinates, this best fit. So I'm going to turn off point one. Okay, and let's just observe what happened. When I remove point one, it still tells me that how, how far off this point is from where it's supposed to be designed, okay? But it says, okay, I'll disregard point one, and if I disregard point one, then point two is exactly where I think it should be, and point three is exactly where I think it should be, except for that 16th on the, on, these, on the south end of it. And it's saying that if we use these two points, now I'm able to find this stationing here. Now I have a slight margin of error, but that's because most likely because of the 16th here, and I'm only using two points. Having a third point would help minimize this margin of error. Okay, but isn't that interesting that it's able to say zero? It, it, it's interesting that the station coordinates actually change. So right now we're at 3280, 10 and an eighth on the northern and easting. Watch how those change when I say best fit to the point one as well. Okay, I'm gonna keep doing. So on the northern, it goes up from an eighth to a nine sixteenth. It goes, okay, so it goes up to a little bit more than half of an inch from an eighth. And then on the easting, it goes from 10 and an eighth down by about three sixteenths. Four sixteenths, goes down a quarter, okay? So your stationing is moving its location that it thinks it is based off how it's trying to find this best fit, okay? So, okay, so now let's do another, another scenario. Let me say I want to consider point three. Okay, so I'm going to click point 3, and let's say I want to see what happens if I just remove point 3 from the equation. Okay, when I move point 3 from the equation, the station completely disregards these values. It's, it does tell me how far off this point would be if we were to add it to these two. But if, I, if it only considers point 2 and point 1, it has to move point 1 to 16 on the east on the northern, and point, and point 2 it has to move 3 16 on the eastern to find a best fit. But notice it still can only get accurate to about an eighth of an inch here on a margin of error. But what's interesting is that the coordinate that that stationing gives me might be a more accurate coordinate than if I was to use all three. So that's the little play that you have to do with all of this. You're looking at the coordinates and the margin of error and how the total station has to move these points to make sure you're making the right decisions and checking all your accuracies. That's the point I'm trying to get across in this video.
So let's take a look at this. So if you notice, I only have two points selected, and let's, let's just take a good look at the coordinates that are at this location. 3280, 10 and 15 sixteenths on the northern, 3280, 10 and 1 16th on the eastern. Now let's go ahead and see what happens when we add a third point. I put it on there, we're at 10 and 9 sixteenths now. On the eastern, with only two points, we're at 10 and 1 16th. And then we click it, and it goes down by a little bit more than a quarter of an inch. But again, this information is critical to understanding how the total station is adjusting your measure control points to find this stationing. All this margin of error, I'm going to say one more time, all this margin of error is saying is that it's able to manipulate these control points in such a way that it's able to match these to the exact way that they, the exact dimensions and angles are supposed to be to find this, this stationing, but it, it still had to make these changes. So the question I would ask you is when you're doing this and you see these, the way the total station had to move and manipulate those control points to find the best fit, are you okay with those changes and how much those points had to be moved to find the best fit? If not, it's time to do some control checks, which I've shown in other videos. Let me also show you one more piece of information that you can get on this page in this more detail section. I don't particularly concern myself with this too much. However, I do think it's important to look at on occasion and let me explain. So for instance, on the more details, I'm gonna expand it. And let's talk about what we see. So the way I interpret the standard deviation of the positioning is just a general number that's describing the coordinate stationing that you see at the top. I don't dwell on this too much because I can pretty much understand how the station you found itself by looking at the points and at the best fit and at the station coordinates. The number that I'm usually interested in this section is standard deviation of the horizontal angle. As you'll see further, the horizontal angle will be better when you have three points that you're using and it might not be nearly as good if you only use two points. And that's just talking about how accurate your horizontal angle measurements are going to be, which is going to help you with your measurements in general. So for instance, watch how my angle significantly improves as I change these control points. So here you see it's 7 minutes 40 seconds of an angle, and I'll just keep toggling back and forth, and you'll be able to see how they change. So with three control points, I stay at 15 seconds, keep jumping around, and I'm jumping beyond that one minute angle mark. So I just try to keep it low, and I try to keep it you know, around 15 seconds of an angle as far as my standard deviation of a horizontal angle goes to hopefully improve my accuracies and all my measurements. But that's just what I wanted to point out to you as you work on your job site. But again, that's mainly what I use that for. I open that up to see my horizontal angle, and whenever I use three points, it's almost always better than when I'm using two points. So I hope that understands. The main takeaway is this stationing is the coordinate that the station thinks it, that the station thinks it is. If you have zero margin of error, that means that it's able to manipulate these control points in such a way to get these control points to match exactly what the plant is asking for. But zero margin of error does not necessarily mean you're perfectly accurate because to get there, the station still had to manipulate, to manipulate the control points in such a way uh, that uh, you might not be pleased with exactly where the unit's putting all your points. So if you're seeing this kind of information on the left, you need to get out there and do some control checks to do some control checks. Um, to figure out which ones are on and which ones are off, talk to, your, talk to your GC, talk to your surveyor to make sure you're dead on on all your, on all your measurements, as close as you need to be.